To say that video games are a big business now would be like saying that McDonald's sells a few burgers each year. Gaming is fucking massive, with at least one organization projecting that the industry will earn as much as over $100 billion in revenue in 2017. The days of the pale indoor kids playing Nintendo and Sega are slowly fading away. The cool kids are gamers, jocks are gamers, your fucking mom probably plays video games on her phone. Even if they're games you think are stupid, they're still video games. And like any product that people spend money on, there are some decent purchases, and there are others that are complete wallet drains. This is my list of the three biggest ripoffs in gaming of 2015. Number three is EA's NHL Legacy Edition for the PS3 and Xbox 360. Sports games are already pretty much a ripoff. Charging full price every year for a couple new features, ones they probably took out two or three years ago and are just now getting around to putting back in the game, along with some roster updates and a couple rule changes, when they basically recycled most of the code from the previous year is already kind of bullshit. Sega and Take-Two basically acknowledged that in the mid-2000s by making all of its games less than half price, and for the most part, they were better than EA's sports titles. EA put the kibosh on that by buying up all the exclusive rights. But NHL Legacy Edition might be the most blatant cash grab yet. NHL Legacy Edition is NHL 2015 with a roster update. No new modes, no gameplay changes, commentary is the same, visuals are the same, production, the same. EA's reasoning, of course, is that the next-gen consoles are now the current-gen consoles. Calling a PS4 next-gen is ridiculous at this point, which is a legit point. So, they wanted to focus their efforts on making real improvements to NHL 16 for the PS4 and Xbox One. Fine, I have no problem with that, makes perfect sense. What doesn't make sense is charging full price for last year's game with a quick coat of paint slapped on it. You're just going to do a roster update? Put NHL 15 back on the shelves for 20 bucks and sell a DLC roster update for $10. Or sell this Legacy Edition for $30. That is fair. But this is EA we're talking about. And they know that people will pay it because mouth breather EA fans already buy the same game every year, year after year anyway. And EA has a history of not giving a shit about the consumer. Fair isn't a word in their vocabulary. Number two is WB's LEGO Dimensions expansion packs for the PS3 and 4, Xbox 360 and 1, and Wii U. LEGO Dimensions is a LEGO game. You've probably played one by now. They've made games based on Star Wars, Indiana Jones, Batman, Marvel, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, of course the LEGO movie. I'm sure I've missed some, but there's a shitload of them. They all follow pretty much the same formula. Go through the levels, do some basic puzzle solving, collect a bunch of shit along the way, unlock a boatload of characters. LEGO Star Wars was the first one of these games, and you could unlock around 60 characters. Sure, most casual Star Wars fans probably didn't even know half of those characters had names, but when you've got 60 characters, you gotta start going deep. Fast forward a few years later, and the Marvel Super Heroes one had around 150 characters and hours of shit to do. LEGO Dimensions is the latest game in this series, so guess how many characters you get when you spend a hefty $100 for the starter pack? 50? 100? 150? 200? 500? 1,000? No. Three. Gandalf from Lord of the Rings, Wild Style from the Lego Movie, and Batman from... Batman. Oh wait though, you can get more characters and even levels. If you're willing to pay for them. This is a toys to life game in the same style as Skylanders and shit like that, so new things are unlocked not by playing, but by paying. A shitload. You want to be Bart Simpson or Wonder Woman or Gimli from Lord of the Rings or Emmett from the Lego movie? It'll cost you $15. $15 in real currency for one character. You get a physical Lego version of them, so some parents might believe it's worth it because they get a toy and a new video game character, but that's a lot of money for two inches of plastic and a video game character. But wait, it gets better! You can buy team packs like Joker and Harley Quinn or Scooby-Doo and Shaggy for only $25. 
$5 off compared to just buying solo characters. Of course, they've packed in some lame ones, like you can meet Chris Pratt from Jurassic World and every kid's favorite character from that movie, a generic ACU trooper. And you can get level packs, which add an entire new mission along with a single character like Marty McFly from Back to the Future or Doctor Who for $30. $30, roughly half the price of a brand new video game for a character and a level. I had to figure the level must be pretty long, right? A few hours of gameplay just to complete the story of it? Nope. 20 minutes. That's how long it took the people I watched playing it on YouTube, and they weren't speedrunners by any means. And no, all that Lego you've already bought your kids is not compatible. Even if you already have the characters they said are in the game, you need the little disc thing that these special ones come with to put them on the little platform or whatever. So, all in, say your bratty little shit wants to get about six new regular characters, two team packs, and a couple level packs. Along with the game itself, you're looking at roughly $300 before tax. And you'd still have far fewer features than a regular $60 LEGO video game that I'm sure the PC Master Race droolies will tell you often go on sale on Steam for 5 to 10 bucks. But, what a great bonus! You'll have a bunch of pieces of plastic your kids will leave around for you to step on in the middle of the night when you get up to throw a piss. And the biggest ripoff in gaming of 2015 is... DLC Season Passes. Yes, I know, this isn't brand new this year, but it's becoming much more prevalent. Here's how DLC used to work. You buy a game, play it for a bit. Six months after the release or so, they'd start coming out with some new levels or missions or characters, and you'd pick and choose the ones you want once you knew what you were getting. Now, they want you to buy all of the DLC up front before they've even told you what it's going to be. Fallout 4 offered a season pass that you could pre-order before the base game even came out. They said they didn't even know what the DLC would be or any release dates. But they know if you give them $30, you'll get whatever they cough out. Fallout DLC has been traditionally good, so maybe it's a good gamble, but remember, Bethesda was also responsible for horse armor. There's a chance it'll be garbage, or that they'll be too busy patching the main game to really put a solid effort into the extra content. The Arkham Knight DLC, which had a season pass option, has been a few 15-minute levels where you get to play as different characters in their own environments, so not in the open world area. Those short little AR challenges, some new race tracks, arguably the worst part of Arkham Knight next to the tank battles, and some shitty new outfits and Batmobile paint jobs so you can play dress up with your Batman and his car. It was $40 and good for the first six months. So if they release some other DLC after that time frame is up, even if you had the season pass, too fucking bad. You'll have to pay for those separately. That's what happened with Trials Fusion, a game that came out in 2014. Yes, I said this isn't new, but they did a season pass. You got six new track packs. And then this year, they released two more track packs outside of the season pass. So fuck you and your pre-ordering of DLC. You don't get those ones. You have to spend even more money. They've already upped the price of games for this generation of consoles to $60 US. So now they're trying to soak you for $100 or more at the register for the main game and some add-on content that may or may not be good that'll be released several months after you've already beat the game and probably moved on to something else. And with no return policy because it's all digital? Well, no wonder they're projecting over $100 billion in revenue in a couple of years from now. They know people are idiots willing to pay for shit, even though they have no idea if it'll be good or not. Soon, companies will just say, Give us $500 and we will give you every game we release next year. No idea what we're releasing, or if it'll be any good, but we'll be happy to take your money in exchange for products that don't currently exist and that we haven't really put much thought into. Just empty your wallets right into my mouth! <laughs> So, there's my list of the three biggest ripoffs in gaming of 2015. Remember, you vote with your wallet, and the reason that all of these things exist is because people have voted yes by continuing to support it. You can't bitch about Call of Duty 7 Rogue Sergeant 4 Hyper Zombies Edition 3 being too similar to Call of Duty 7 Rogue Sergeant 4 Hyper Zombies Edition 2 when you plunk down $60 for it every year. You are the reason it exists. 
Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go pre-order a sequel to a game that had major bugs on release day, and then come up with a bunch of angry shit to write on Reddit about it, when the new game has major bugs on release day, because I'm a fucking goddamn moron that never learns from his mistakes.